it was probably because you didn't have the either the option to do it, but more importantly, it's usually that you were afraid to do it. You were afraid that you wouldn't achieve, or you were afraid, you know, what would happen in the meantime. You were afraid of what people might think. You were afraid that maybe you didn't know enough or didn't, you know, weren't good enough. That's some limiting beliefs too. So there's all kinds of fear going on in our life all the time. And the minute that you can be aware of the fear is the minute that you can control the fear is the minute that you can start to direct the fear away from you and your goals. So that's what we're really going to be talking about today. Uh, without further ado, welcome my man, Les Brown, the man about town. In a time of change that's taking place around the world, in a time when people are feeling a great deal of anxiety and fear and reservations about the future, at a time when people are going to work and don't know whether or not they will have a job when they get off, and not necessarily because of their performance, but because of what's happening in the economy. At a time when there are challenges, more so than ever before, in personal relationships, when we look at what's happening on the crime level, and what's happening with our youth, that many times I'm sure that We've all taken time just to stop and reflect many times when we hear what's happening in the news or read the newspapers. Where's all of this leading to? What's going on here? And so I think that now more than ever, we must begin to look at what are the things that we can do that would put us on some firm footing in life, that will enable us to do some things and, and use some powers that we have that many of us go through life never ever discovering that we have those things going for us. And part of that, I believe, is knowing what it is your life worth. What is it that gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose? Because once you find that, it puts you in your power place. See, if you know what your life work is, I encourage you to start working on it. If you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. And if you don't know what it is that you showed up to do, if you don't know why you're here, I encourage you to find out what your purpose is here. What is the meaning of your life? What will be different? Have you ever asked yourself that question? I've done that. I, I remember coming from a friend to my funeral and I was reflecting on how much time I had left. And I went for a walk in a park thinking about this guy whose life was so promising. And I mean, he wasn't an old guy. He was quite young, in fact. And I thought about all of the things that he said he was going to do, and he never got a chance to do those things. And I started thinking about my own life and how much time I had left to do the things that I would like to do. And at that time, I wasn't sure what my life purpose was, what my life's work was. I wasn't sure about it at that time. And I thought about it quite a lot. I had some idea, but I, I wasn't convinced that I don't think I felt worthy. I didn't believe that it could be me to do this kind of work that I'm doing right now. And I say to you that if you begin to take a conscious effort to find out what it is that you're supposed to do, I say that it can literally save your life. I said that it can literally save your life. 85% of the American public according to recent studies, are going to jobs that they hate, working on jobs that do not challenge them. They get sick thinking about going. Because see, when you go to a job and you already know how far you can go, you can already see that proverbial glass ceiling. See, when you're going someplace and you already know how much you're going to make, you already know how far you can go, you're at a dead-end position, it erodes your self-esteem. It lowers your sense of yourself. It creates an inner turmoil. It creates an emptiness in you. So I say that your life is worth finding what it is that you're supposed to do. And I'm not saying quit your job. I'm saying find it and do just a little bit of it. Just start working at it just a little bit. But do find out what your work is and hold on to it and don't let your dream go. Don't let it go. See, and here's a, something else I want you to begin to look at. Why is it that most people 
don't pursue their dreams or don't do better than what they're doing if they're capable of doing it. I think that many of us don't go the next step because we don't know what to do yet. And I say that, that the reason that we don't even explore the possibility of what to do is because subconsciously we don't believe that it can happen for us and we don't believe that we deserve it. So here's what I'm suggesting. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? So I'm saying that as you begin to look at where you want to go, if you want to make it today, and things are changing so fast, you have to literally run to stand still. I'm saying that you've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. Here's something else. Most people are not living their dreams because of fear, ladies and gentlemen. Fear, limited vision, and lack of self-esteem is what keeps most people doing things they don't want to do. The same reason that people stay in relationships where they're abused or they're unhappy or it's unfulfilling. They can't see themselves beyond that relationship. They can't see themselves enjoying life without that person. They think that this is all that they can do. The same reason that people get stuck at a certain level in life. They can't see things being better for them. And they think that this is it and this is all they deserve. This is all they've ever seen. It's been passed on to them. And they think that this is it for them. Oh, no. I was looking what Dr. Blanton, Smiley Blanton, who is a colleague of Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, what he said about fear. He said, fear is the most subtle and destructive of all human diseases. Ladies and gentlemen, fear kills dreams. Fear kills hope. Fear put people in the hospital. Fear can age you. Fear, ladies and gentlemen, can hold you back from doing something that you know within yourself that you are capable of doing, but it will paralyze you. And it seems like you're in a hypnotic spell. And I ask you a question, what is the benefit? What's the benefit of allowing fear to hold you back? What's the benefit of giving up on yourself, of not stepping out on life and taking life on? What is the benefit for you? What's the plus in that? It's one of the things I had to ask myself. So I didn't want to make any mistakes. I wanted everybody to like me. I wanted to be perfect the first time I did something. It's not going to happen. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to hurt some folks' feelings. You're going to create some enemies whenever you decide that you want to begin to take life on. You've got to ask yourself, how long am I going to allow this to hold me back? I like what Zig Ziglar says. He said, fear is false evidence appearing real. That is an illusion that we create in our mind. It is a state of mind that can be changed. So let's look at how we can begin to take some steps to restructure that fear, to begin to expand our visions of ourselves, to begin to increase our self-esteem. Webster said that self-esteem means confidence and satisfaction in oneself. Look at your life right now. Whatever you've done up to this point in time, your life is working. Whatever you have produced, it came out of you as a result of the kind of person that you have become. It's a result of your choices. It's a result of your consciousness. Now you have to ask yourself, are you satisfied with what you have produced? Is this what you want? Would you like for things to be better than this? Do you believe that you deserve better than this? Are you content? This is it. You don't have to do everything, anything else. That you already resign yourself in life and say, well, I'm happy. I'm not starving like the people in Calcutta. Are you allowing yourself to get off the hook like that? Or do you believe somewhere in the back of your mind or in your heart that there is some other great work for you to do? There's something else that life has for you. And that's why you're here. How do we handle this fear factor? How do we increase our self-esteem? You have to begin to fortify yourself. How do we do that? 
I believe that you have to begin to consciously monitor your inner conversation and start talking to yourself. Start building yourself up. Sometimes the only good things you will hear about you are the things that you say to you. So I'm saying learn to be your own booster. Start building yourself up. Start encouraging yourself. Start saying, I can do this. I can make this happen. When I started thinking about becoming a speaker, I said, yes, I can do this. I can make this happen. When I start trying to convince myself I can be a businessman after flopping and failing and losing thousands of dollars and feeling stupid and dumb and having people take advantage of me because of what I didn't know. I had to talk to myself because people were saying to me that I was dumb. And somewhere in the back of my mind, I was saying, you're right. Look at what I've done. I had to say, no, 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 Les. Hey, hey, come on, man. Get your stuff together. You can handle this. You just haven't figured it out yet. It's all right. This is your training period. This is the tuition you have to pay for what you don't know. You can do this. Other people have done it. It doesn't take an Einstein. Get you some people that can teach you some stuff that you don't know. Get you some people that have done it successfully and learn from them. Take some seminars, workshops, read some books on how to manage a business. Change the way you see yourself and begin to tend to the personal details. Understand that nobody's going to take care of your business better than you. And when I start changing that kind of mindset of beating myself up because of my mistakes and start looking at the possibility of my doing better, of my making the adjustment that would enable me to do what I want to do successfully, things begin to change. And I say, stop beating up on yourself. You do do it. I know you do it. I've done it. It's a natural inclination for us to put ourselves down. See, we are born negative, I think, in a negative consciousness because we live in a negative world. Here's some other things, ladies and gentlemen. Begin to guard your mind against negative programming, like turn off the television. Don't watch the news. So you've got to guard the kinds of things that you put in your mind. See, if you don't program your mind, your mind will be programmed because human beings are goal-oriented. That's why we die of broken hearts early. That's why we're running through life to early graves. We're going through life, ladies and gentlemen. I think that Henry David Thoreau said that most men live in quiet desperation. Most of us go through life running scared. So we had created this in our minds, false evidence appearing real. We made it real in our minds. That's why Churchill said there's nothing to fear but fear itself. That's the destructive monster. So... Turn off things that can contribute to your fear. Turn a deaf ear to people that all they can do is talk about how negative things are because they have bought into the consciousness of the world. Start attending workshops, seminars, listening to tapes on a daily basis to begin to recondition your mind, to retrain your thinking. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing and hearing. Listen to things that can empower you, that can enable you to create a new reality for yourself in a new life for yourself. You might appear to be strange around most people. You know, most people think you're strange if you're happy today. See, these people have not found their purpose in life. That's why they're grumpy. But that's why they're miserable. That's why they're so negative. They're hurting and they want to hurt other people. So start practicing using programs for your mind. Seminars, books, workshops. Keep a journal. Record your thoughts. What's happening with you? Every day when you get up, have a journal near you. See, ladies and gentlemen, we get three to four thoughts a year that if we would act on those thoughts, they could change our life. What idea are you sitting on? Write your ideas down. And then, once you get that idea, take the leap. Take the leap. See, it's out here in the universe. If you don't take the plunge, I guarantee you, somebody else will. Take the plunge. Go into action. And ladies and gentlemen, you will be surprised at how things will come together. You'll be surprised. Now, you're going to have some difficult challenges. Ooh, my man, Les is breaking it down. That was an awesome video. I tried to share the screen so maybe you guys could see it. So uh, with that, we're going to get into our shares. Roxy, what do you have for us? Great morning, you guys. I love how I can see like people on this now. Um, all right, some of my biggest takeaways. There's an amazing video. There were so many of them. I loved how you talked about really getting clear on what is the meaning of your life and how much time do you have left. 
he talked about how he went to a friend's funeral and then that made him ponder and uh, and think about how much time he has left. I know personally for me in the past, I felt like I'm going to be here forever. I feel like I'm untouchable and I hear these stories of just like you just hear stories and you're like that could never happen to me, but you never know what can happen. And if you start to really get clear on that, that you're not here forever, I truly uh, do believe that then we start to look at life and, and uh, not only look at life, but the way that we act through life completely changes. So that to me was absolutely powerful. Um, and then he talked about how 85% of people go to jobs that they hate. Like here in America, 85% of people go to jobs that they hate. And there's been a study that most people have heart attacks on a Monday morning while they're going to work, you know? So for me, it's just like they're going to jobs that they don't like, that don't challenge them, that don't, that there's a cap as to how much you can grow, you know? And, and the essence of life is growth. Everything around us is continuously growing from like absolutely just everything is always growing. And if we're not growing, then we're dying. And if we're dying, then that means we're, we're just like walking dead corpse. So uh, for me, that was really, really powerful and really filing, finding what's your, what's your calling. Like what are you meant here to do? Like, ask yourself, am I really fulfilled in this job? Am I really fulfilled where I'm at? And if you're not, that's okay. Then you get the opportunity to see what it is that fulfills you. And once you start to see that, then, then you can start doing more of that. The key is not to work. The key is to do the things that you love, that give you life, that give you all sorts of fulfillment and, and uh, in, in ways that you can continue to grow. Like whenever I came into Herbalife, that's why I fell in love with Herbalife because there is no ceiling. Like you can keep going and you can keep going and you can keep going. Like there's all these levels and there's no ceiling as to how much you can do, who you can be. Like, like there's just absolutely no ceiling. So that's absolutely amazing. Um, I also liked how he talked about personal growth. And again, if we're not growing, we're dying. So in the last 90 days, what have you read? Like, how have you challenged yourself? Like, what new skills are you learning? How have you expanded your mind? Like, how are you growing? Because sometimes I've done this too in the past where I just focus so much on my physical, my physical, my physical, and that's amazing. But if 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 my mindset is here then my physical will only go will go and it will only take me so far like the biggest thing to grow is our mind you know and he talked about uh programming your mind you know he said he's just like if you don't program it somebody else will so what are you watching what are you listening to you know i haven't had a tv since like i lived in texas so that was like maybe like six seven years ago i haven't had a television why? Because I decided a long time ago that I was going to be the dictator of what went into my mind and I wanted to choose what kind of thoughts I wanted to have, what kind of life I wanted to have by, by my thinking. And I was able to experience how thinking has such a great impact in people's lives just by having my mom around and having my aunt, like my aunt around. Two different people, but one prays and one doesn't. One believes and one doesn't. So I saw the, the, the difference in them, and I've seen the lifestyles that they live. One is able to go on vacations, and she always has money coming, and just like this abundance of energy and flow, and just happy, smiling, and all these things, and the other one not so much, still living month to month, still struggling. Why? Because it's a mindset. So I was able and fortunate to see what mindset is able to do for your life, and I'm really grateful for that. And uh, also, he talked about, uh, are you satisfied with what you've produced in the last couple of years in your life? So again, it goes back to like, how are we growing? And if you're not satisfied, it's okay because you get to get better. You know, that's one of the most beautiful things that we have as human beings is that we always have the opportunity to change. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did a month ago or a week ago because every single moment you're given the opportunity to change. And... We're like so different from anything else on this earth. Out of everything on this earth, we're the ones that have the power to choose and the power to decide what kind of life we, we will live. So that for me is like 
massively powerful, especially coming to the end of the year. Uh, it's it's like five weeks out into into 2016, so it's a perfect time to recap and to see what have you produced in the last year, you know, and, and celebrate your win. Celebrate every single win, you know, like every single win, like celebrate it. But then also go back to the things that you can improve upon because when you go back, then you could take those things that you want to improve upon and make 2016 like even a greater year. So that was my takeaways. Awful stuff. Loved it. Great shares. Great uh, personal stories. Great job, Rox. Uh, for me, uh, Roxy touched on a lot of great things. I'll, I'll kind of fill in some gaps that I also heard. I heard a lot of the stuff that she heard, so that was great. Uh, a couple other things I heard was, you know, your life is worth finding out the purpose. He mm -hmm. said, you don't have to quit your job to go after it. Uh, you just got to start moving in the right direction. I want to share a little story. I went to school for eight, like eight years, uh, got my doctorate in physical therapy, and I really loved health and wellness. And I found myself, because of my student loan debt, taking a job in a setting that wasn't challenging. I was working with seniors, but basically I felt like a glorified walker, just to be honest. Like I would try to take them to walk around. We would sit, we would stand a little bit. And... I felt like I had to do that because I had so much student loan debt that I had to pay off, that I had to get a paying job that was going to pay to let me still live uh, and pay my student loan debt. And that was pretty much the only one. So I, I remember sitting there and I remember thinking to myself, I was like, Aubrey, is this what you want to have your life be about? And it was, you're going to have to have these times in your life where it's not about talking to your parents. It's not about talking to your friends. It's not about talking to your coworkers. It's about talking to yourself and having those honest and transparent conversations with yourself. Those are the conversations that change your life. I sat there and I said, Aubrey, is this what you want to be known for? Is this what the impact you want to leave on the planet? And I'm not saying there was anything wrong with it. That's not what I'm saying. But what I was saying is me in my heart, I wanted to make a bigger impact. I wanted to make a bigger difference. And that's what I wanted my life to be about. Everybody's life is about something. You know, uh, the difference is some people's life story are a little bit more compelling than others, not because they were born any different. Usually they're born a lot worse, actually. People who have terrible backgrounds that are doing amazing things uh, because they, they've gotten through stuff and now they're not scared to go do other. They don't let fear hold them. And their lives are about amazing things because they made decisions to go after it. And for me, I said, you know what? I don't want my life to just be about this. I didn't quit my job. I had three jobs, as a matter of fact. I started doing my own wellness talks. I was like, hey, I'm just going to try some stuff. He said three reasons why people don't follow their dreams. Number one, they don't know. Number two, they don't believe. Number three, they think they don't deserve it. So for me, I didn't quite know how to get to it. I was like, I remember thinking, I was like, I want to be like Dr. Oz meets The Rock. That's what I used to think. I was like, I want to be that dude that helps people with wellness, and I want to be fit. That was like, Dr. Oz meets the rock. So I was like, let's just try some stuff. I was like, okay, let's start these talks. I bought a camera. You got to take steps in the direction. I went to Best Buy. I bought a camera and an iPad. I was like, I'm going to just start making videos and try to figure this thing out. So I, I would just talk about things I was passionate about. You know, I made some videos like meditation for dummies. This was all before I started my Herbalife journey. I was just trying things because I said, I want to uncover more of my life's purpose. And I think I can make a bigger impact that I'm, that I'm doing right now. And one of, you know, our family goals and intention is, is to leave the world better than when we came, to positively impact the world, to have there be a positive difference because of our lives. And I just kept looking for it. And then once I was looking for it, that's when the Herbalife community found me and I said, hey, this might be another tool I can use. It wasn't like I was like, hey, I'm just gonna leave my job. It was like, hey, this is maybe another tool I can use. So whether that's the Herbalife community opportunity for you or maybe it's something else, there's always time around your life where you can fit in new opportunities to learn and grow and find your life purpose. You know, there's always seminars. There's always books. There's always meetup groups. There's always online materials. There's always this stuff. You just got to go look for it. It's not going to find you. So that's kind of how I got introduced to this. And I was like, I honestly, I, this was my thinking when I started as a health coach. I said, you know, I'm, I'm treating these patients. They're 70, 80 years old. Most of them, they can't really function that well. How much of an impact am I going to be able to make? I was seeing the same patients come over and over every two, three months. Why? They weren't really eating right. I asked them what they had for breakfast, coffee and a donut, if anything. And I started to see a trend. And for me, I said, I want my life purpose 
things started to click for me and things are going to happen to you in life that are, they'll seem tough at the time, but in the long run, they'll be the greatest things in your life. So for me, I was a late bloomer. I didn't go through puberty till like 11th grade. I found myself the short one, a little chubby, slow, unconfident. And I remember one day it clicked for me. I raced my friend. It was a few things that happened to me. I raced my friend. I got smoked so easy. He didn't even look like he tried. And I was pissed. I was like, this fool just smoked me. And I'm like, I thought I was playing basketball. I thought I was mad. And I was like, wait a minute. I just got smoked. And then a, a friend of mine who's actually bigger than me as far as weight-wise made a comment about my body. And I said, I made a decision. I was like, I'm behind right now, but I won't be behind forever. And that's when I got in the gym. And it wasn't easy. I was taking the bus an hour each way. But what it did for me is it changed my mindset about what I could control. I could control my body if I made the discipline action. And the reason I say that is because at the time I didn't understand. I was like, why did I get all my athleticism late? I could have maybe played college ball or something. I was like, why, why, why? Now I understand why. Because I had to go through that to intentionally cultivate my fitness and health so that I could see the value that it could do in your life. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be 100 and ripped up, fully functional. And I don't say that to say good, good for you, uh, like awesome probably. I say that because that's possible when you live this lifestyle. I just while we watched a video of a, a 90-year-old uh, Indian gentleman who was a bodybuilder. He won 1952 Mr. Uh, Universe. Gun's still big, probably as big as mine. He's 92. He's actually 101 now, but the video was shot when he was 92. He's still out there getting it. And I said, what if I could help start a movement and impact people that they would take on this healthy, active culture like I did when I was young so when they were 20 and 30 and 40, it became cool to be healthy and active so that when they were 50, 60, and 70, and 80, they were living a different life. That's really what I thought. I was like, I'm going to make a little bit of impact when they're 80 and they're already like this, or I can make a huge impact when they're 20, 30, 40, 50, and then later they live like this. And for me, I just said, hey, I want to make a bigger impact. That's all it was. I wanted to find more of my purpose. And that's why I say for you, whatever it is, sit down, get clear with yourself. What do you want your life to be about? And then start making moves in the right direction. They don't even have to be right or wrong or good or bad. There is no thing. I'm going to tell you guys, steps are better than no steps. Sitting, you know, I love the quote, indecision is worse than a bad decision. I could have just sat there and be like, hey, I don't really know what to do. I'm not going to do it. I just said, hey, let's go try some stuff. We're going to make some videos. I'm going to get this camera. I had a little handheld camera. It wasn't that good. But I was like, yo, I ended up doing a video on there that got, has like 30,000 views now. I never thought that was going to be possible. People email me about it all the time about, you know, your video changed my – that was just because I started taking steps. They don't have to be in the right direction. If they're your first steps, all of them are going to be in your right direction. But start taking steps towards your life's purpose. That's the intention. Don't let fear, don't let the unknown. I love the end when he was talking about, you know, he said, consciously start to monitor your inner conversation. Are you letting the thoughts of others govern your actions? Are you letting your own self-doubt govern your actions? And if you are, start to pump yourself up. Start to intentionally take control of your mind and feed it with positivity from outside, but also inside. Start to pump yourself up because this is the biggest thing. And if you can get this, this will change your life. And this is what I got. At the end of the day, everybody goes home to their own house, in their own room, and they lay on their own pillow. And at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what anybody else says about you. All that matters, if you want your life to be different, is what you do. So there's, I can sit here and think about all the things that people say, and I can let that affect me, and I can go home to a regular home. And I can let my finances be regular. And I can let my abilities to help people be regular. Or I can say, I don't care what people think. I'm going to chase my dream. And I'm going to tell you guys, the people that do that, regardless of what people think, are the people that Mark Zuckerberg, a Les Brown, a Tony Robbins. You know, these are people that when they go home, guess where they go home to? Million dollar homes, where they want to. Starting foundations, having time freedom. They didn't listen to what other people say and their life is different because I'm telling you guys, it doesn't matter what anybody says because at the end of the day, what other people say doesn't help your life. 
Because at the end of the day, you got to go home and face life. You got to go home and face your finances, face your relationships, face your happiness and fulfillment. And that doesn't come from anybody else. And if you listen to the group think of everybody else, if they had it and they knew it, they would be there. And usually we, we let the opinions of people who aren't there tell us where to go. And guess where we end up? Right where they're at, not there. Struggling, unfulfilled, unhappy. And the moment you get that, the moment you take the reins of your own life and stop letting all the opinions of people that aren't really that positive and don't really know, they just have an opinion because they want to say something, govern your life, that's the minute your life will change. So I know I went a little long. I was getting a little passionate. We're going to let you guys go unless we got Let's get one share from the, call, from the uh, Zoomers. Who's excited to share? Raise your hand so I can put the video on you. I'm peace. I'm peace. Let's get it. Can we hear you? We can't hear you. There we go. You're good now. What, what was your takeaway? Kind of mind-blowing a little bit because I'm reading a book called uh, Awaken the Giant uh, and by Tony Robbins, and it's kind of making full circle right now just uh, since this weekend. Um, I think it all goes back to who are you, you know, who you are. Who are you anyway? It's it's about personal growth on and and then knowing who you are because we go through life um, doing or becoming what society thinks we are supposed to become, not who we want to be or who we want to become. And it goes back to fear, you know. It goes back to fear if we're gonna fail or if society is gonna accept who we want to be, what makes us happy, you know, and that's the whole point you know we need to be strong and we need to actually sit down and take action and and to lay this foundation we need to really really know who we are and that's uh, yeah we just need to let go of all our inhibitions and i think we need to go by, back and you know i think uh it's a question that the greatest thinkers of all times, like Socrates and Sartre, Sartre have said, you know, I think, therefore I am. So I think we need to think where we want to be and who we want to be and just let it, let it ride, let it, let it go, you know, just, just do it. There you go. Powerful stuff. Great share, I'm peace. I am a reader, a takeaway from Susanna who's at work, but still tuned in and still shared. Thank you so much. Susanna from Arizona says, there is no benefit on giving up on yourself. We have the power to change the natural human inclination to be negative. And the way we will do that is by expanding our mind, read a little more, never allowing vague fears to hold us back from what we really want. Let's get it. That was so powerful, you guys. So it was a great Triple M. I know we're using a new medium now with Zoom, but I think it's going to be even better. We can share the videos as they show and we can share people as they share. It's going to be powerful. We're going to upload this to, to YouTube. Share the video. If you're listening in, definitely pay this forward and invite people. It's going to be on Zoom every single Monday morning, 8 a.m. with the link posted. All you got to do is click the link. It's so easy. Let's grow every Monday. Let's keep getting better. And you guys, let's have an amazing week and intentionally live our life. Next level. Peace out. Adios. Great job, you guys.